Hello, it's Marco here from Markham 3D, and today we're going to be talking about Simple Cloth Pro add-on and all its new features, all the, the wonderful asset library that comes with it now, all the prefab cloth library. <laughs> Idiot. So in this video, just by itself, we're just going to be going through the cloth library and how to use it. There is a previous video on how we used it. Now you can pick this up on the Blender Market or Gumroad. There is a link in the description. Also, the character that I'm using in this is from Character Creator 3. There is a link in the description, and I'll say that again a little bit later. I know this add-on's going to help me out quite a bit coming up because I'll be using it in the web series. So if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Keeps updating my content. So let's kind of jump into the video and get it sorted. So there's plenty of little tips and tricks, so make sure you watch the video to the end. Because I'm not a character creator, I highly recommend using Character Creator 3. At the moment, it's pretty cheap. There is a link in the description if you want to pick it up. But just very briefly, this would probably take me 10, 20 hours to make. I can make this in 10 minutes using this program and multiple times. So it very much is a cost saving application. But we're not here to talk about this. We're going to export this character and bring him into Blender. And if we see here, he's already got clothes. Let me just get rid of his shirt. Now, once you've got Simply Cloth Pro, or if you don't have it, there is a link in the description to pick it up as well, either from the Blender Market or Gumroad. We have to install it, edit, preferences, install, go to your downloads folder, or wherever you've downloaded it, double click, make sure there's a tick next to Simply Cloth Pro. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We are in. In the latest version, there is a preset library of clothing, which is absolutely amazing. So for instance, if I want to create a shirt, click on the cloth library, let's find a shirt. Let's kind of line it up, scale it, get it to the right size, scale on the Y. Whoop. Probably a little bit big, but that's fine. Let's just deal with that one now. Control A, we're just going to apply that scale. Now I'm just going to put the end frames down to 100 and I'm just going to press play. And silly Marco forgot to put on the collision. So select the body collisions, activate. Let's click our shirt again, reset, play, pause. And then we go, we've already created this shirt. What we can do is come down into merge by distance. And we can see that we've merged these seams. Now there's a few things we can do. We can apply the cloth modifier up here and that applies everything. So now it's a single mesh. And then from here, we can just kind of clean this up manually. So for instance, let's grab these two merge at center let's grab these two merge at center and so on we can fix that seam and we see that we've got that seam there as well let me just quickly clean this up i can go alt left click and select this edge loop here press ctrl b for a bevel use the mouse wheel to go up by one let's bring it back down Control numpad minus alt s to scale in v to rip and you can kind of see we've got our seam obviously we'll do a little bit of work to clean that up but the other thing we can do is select our t-shirt. We can go into Sculpt Cloth. And now we've got all Blender's 2.9 cloth stuffy McStuff stuff where we can kind of start dragging things around and have all this jazz. Um, you know, we can push it in, grab it to pull it out or move it around. Or we've got like kind of like the pinch there. So that's pretty cool with what we can do there. Obviously, I'm just going to leave that. We can obviously spend a lot more time working on it. I'm just going to get rid of his pants. For now, I'm just, just hide his shirt, sorry. Let's create a pair of shorts. Let's go GZ and we'll just line these back up. Scale on the Y, Control A, scale. And then now if I were to change this back to 100, reset, play, they'll probably fall down. Nope. Yep. <laughs> So what we can do, let's just line that up so he sits above his hips there. So this is a bit of an important tip. We can go bake all dynamics and what will happen is it'll bake everything in. And so now we can move left and right and so on and so forth. Now we can see that they're not really stretching all the way around. Obviously denim is the preset material. So maybe what we should do is clear the cache. Now you don't just press reset. You actually got to press the trash can. What I'm actually going to do, because this is denim, I'm just going to scale it outwards. And let's go delete because I can't remember if I did it. And then we'll just go back or dynamics. And you can see now that that has closed up a lot better. So let's kind of find a frame where it looks good. Where I don't have to do much work. We've got a little bit of haggliness up here. But what we can do is almost kind of like apply cloth. And so that seems to have come across quite nicely. You can see that there is a bit of a gap in there. This is actually based off of the collision of the object that it's wrapping around. 
So we might try and go to, sorry, the outside thickness to 0 0.005. And let's go delete that bake all dynamics and we'll bake it again. And you can see that it's now a little bit closer. We could probably go even more, but then there's a chance of the actual cloth going into the mesh and then causing a whole bunch of dramas. Now, once again, we can also do the merge by distance. And there we go, it's kind of closed up. We've got a little bit of a gap there, but that's something we can fix up manually. From here, I can go apply cloth. We have our seam. And then from here, we can kind of build up on the mesh. So for instance, if we want to create some loops, we could. So you can see with this add-on, we've opened up a whole bunch of opportunities of creating clothes, Alt-H. One thing that we probably should have done before we even started is, let me just quickly create a new uh, preset. Let's just quickly just throw on a singlet, G, Z. I could have gone tab into edit mode and we can see it's already UV unwrapped here. But the reason why this one's not pretty is because we used that merge tool and we lost a little bit of details merging these vertices together. That's just something to be mindful of, but you can see that we can create our own clothing quite simply. We can also use, you know, the cloth tool, which we already covered and we can do all that kind of jazz all for fun. So we've got lots of things we can do now. So this is simply cloth pro. If you want to pick it up, there is the link in the description. Let's do a quick overview as well of what simply cloth can do. So for starters, I'm just going to shift a, let's add in a cube and then I'm just going to kind of rotate it like so. From here, what I can actually do is apply the collision. Bam, that's done. Now I can add a plane to kind of like make a cloth or I can just go into the cloth library and we can just select the blanket. There it is, or the towel, whatever you want. Let's go GZ. And right now I can just change this back to hundred. Press play. And you can see that we've got a cloth. What the heck has it landed on? <laughs> so what it's landed on is actually the character. <laughs> Oh, that is brilliant. I didn't realize that would happen. So I've got the character there. So you can see that it's kind of landed on his head. Now the reason why it's protruded through the man bun is because there's no collision on the man bun. Let's just delete that cube. Uh, let's just grab this. I'm gonna go back to frame one. Let's just move it to the side. Another thing we can do is we can go into edit mode. And for instance, I can select this edge here and we can go add a pin layer. And this would be just kind of like edge, whatever we want to call it. Okay. And then we can see that this area is pinned. And then if we go back into object mode, reset, press play, you can see now it's gonna be dangly dangly. Now, obviously what else I could do is, and then I'm just gonna select maybe these two here. Let's go add new pin layer, edge, sure. And then if we go tab, reset, play, you can kind of see what we're getting. So this is wool. We can obviously change it to silk and we'll have a very much a different effect. So it seems very light on. Another thing we can do is add a pillow. And I believe this should inflate. If I press play, it sure does inflate, but it also falls to the ground. Uh, maybe to make it inflate a little bit quicker. Let's go into pressure intensity. I'm just gonna make it 20 and I'm just bump this up to 10 as well. I don't know what it does, but let's go reset blow it all up and we can see that it's kind of expanded itself there. Now that if we kind of like that mesh here, we can just go apply cloth and then bam, we now have a pretty heavy duty pillow. What we can do to kind of clean that up is we can come into the modifiers. Let's go into decimate. I'm just going to go like 0.1. And then if I press control A, we can see just how much has come down. And what's that? That's 0.1 of whatever the poly count was. So there we have it, the Simply Cloth Pro add-on. If you wanna pick it up, once again, link in the description, Character Creator 3, link in the description. Um, what else? Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for sticking around this long as well. Once again, I'm gonna mention the web series that I'm working on and I'll probably kind of build onto that throughout the course of the next couple of weeks and months. Um, I've got some really good people on board. So we're going to really try and go all out and get this created. So thank you very much and until next time.